great, great being here. Um, it's, I think, my fourth or fifth um, AWE, and it's always an incredible crowd. My name is Morris van Grotus. I'm the CEO of Gestigon. Um, Gestigon, we were a startup for six years developing gesture control and full body tracking software. Um, one focus area was AR and VR, and we just joined some seven months ago Valeo. Valeo is a French tier one in automotive. And frankly speaking, you can really question yourself. Come on, you have cool stuff. We're thinking about the future. We try to build Ready Player One. Snow Crash is our Bible. On the one hand side, we, we really try to move forward. On the other hand, a company like Estigon joins a tier one. 100,000 blue color workers building switches. How does that fit? And I want to spend a few words on why we believe it fits so well and why I'm even surprised that I don't see cars out there in the show. Um, because mobility is changing. Think backwards. Well, first of all, a fact, we have 1.2 people in a car while they're driving. And think about yourself, if you're not living in downtown Berlin and ride a bike all the time, think about how much time you spend in the car. I have a one, one hour 15 commute, so on a normal office day, I'm two and a half hours in the car, practically always alone. That is really a lot of time. And with self-driving cars, we will start freeing up time that no one ever had before. We're freeing up opportunity to rethink what do we want to do. And it's not like gaming industry where you have something and you want to add AR and VR to it. It's not like smart home where you try to add something to it. It's opening a space that wasn't available before. We will have 1.2 passengers in every car on the ride. And in my case, it would be two and a half hours of spare time that I want to fill. And my target will be, I want to fill it with everything that I do usually. I may want to work. I may want to chat with my partner. I may want to help my kids for the homeworks. I would be playing. I would, I don't know, start with yoga, learn something new, um, support a nonprofit organization, do whatever. I have two and a half hours every day in a car. And we want to fill that. And this means we have a totally greenfield approach to provide a meaning to our traveling. And if you think about then, OK, well, what, what does it mean? I, I, I can do it in my car, but I will be having a shared car. I won't drive my own car anymore. It's even worse. In my own car, I can, I don't know, have my library in there. I can have my iPod in there. I can do, I can fill my car with things I want to have in the car. But if I think about a sharing community, um, it won't be my car. So what does it mean? It means that the entire world around us, whatever we want to do and want to see, needs to be digital. And digital means an opening to AR, because it's about how do I live in the car? How do I get content into the car that's specific to me? How do I interact with a car? I won't be watching movies all the time. I want to interact with the digital content. Um, there will be a lot of ways of doing it. Um, in general, forgot about that, it's about augmenting your ride. Providing an augmented experience in the car and imagine that as a total greenfield approach. You're not discussing with the Xbox. How could I play better with a head-mounted device versus a controller? That's not what it's about. You start at scratch. And I think there's an incredible opportunity for all of us, um, not only at Gestigon, but also the AR and VR community, to build and fill this up with meaningful content and whatever meaningful means for you. Um, how will this be created? Um, we will start easy. We will start with small screens. Um, it will be 2D screens, it will be 3D screens, it will be touch or without touch. Um, 
Anyone who ever saw Pimp My Ride some 10 years ago, I'm, I'm still the MTV generation, I'm not sure if they still exist. And you saw these huge, I don't know, 22 inch screens in, in the cars, forget those. There have been studies, anything larger than 14 inch in a car makes you seasick because it fills up your peripheral view too much. So you will have a lot of small screens in the car rather than one big one. You won't have this cinema experience. Um, or you will need some other way to provide the content or the, the ride content behind the content to give you an information what is happening on the street. When is there a right turn, a left turn? When is the car stopping? When is it um, accelerating? Um, you need that information, otherwise you get seasick and anyone who has small kids that start reading in the car um, knows if you look like that for too long, you get seasick, you need the information. So 2D and 3D screens is what's happening today. Um, we will be talking about everything else in the car too. And if I've seen what was shown at the last CES last year, um, if I've seen the first hints what's going to be shown at the CES this year, it's really exciting. Um, we're not yet with holograms, but I, I hope it's just a moment, a question of time, and I, I would say there are enough engineers to solve that problem. That's not my job as a CEO. Um, but we were gonna have them. And um, everything that I've seen that is pseudo-holographic, I wouldn't say it's holographic already today, is, is incredible because you get the see-through experience and you can use that in the car without getting seasick. Um, and you have content to work with. Um, we might be thinking about head-mounted devices. Anyone who starts talking about VR in the car, kick his ass. That won't happen. Um, we, we tested it out with a strong gaming laptop with, with HTC Vive, the latest version, as well as the Oculus. You get seasick. Not when the car is driving straight, not accelerating and braking, not the bump, but once the car takes a turn, the, the sensors in the, in, the, in the device start moving contra the way the car is moving, so it gets worse. So if you have a very straight track, I don't know, the Route 66 as your work way, 50 miles straight, VR could work everywhere else, forget about it, it will be AR. Um, we do see AR devices as a possibility. I'm not so sure if, if it'll be more like the, the HoloLens, full helmet or Avagent kind of thing, um, but anyone who had the chance to um, take a first view on what Magic Leap is doing, anyone who believes that my glasses will at some point be an AR device, um, that could work. I personally don't believe that it will be a specific car glasses, that's my personal opinion. Anyone who doesn't wear a glasses, doesn't want to put glasses on in the car, and everyone who wears glasses doesn't want to exchange them in the car. So it will be more of your everyday device, if you have one, if, if it's a smart device, that can be used there. Um, it will be um, a lot about driving information. It will be what will the car be doing. I saw um, a, start, a French startup, which was very interesting, who used lights at the a pillar, B pillar, and C pillar that went up and down to balance, to give my eye the information how the car is being balanced driving the road. Um, for me, they're giving me the ability to focus on something, but as it was an active illumination, it gave me sufficient information, at least that's what I claimed, to have this balancing out that my brain knew what my body was doing because I got the visual information. Um, it will, of course, be about safety. Um, Anyone investing too much into safety, forget about that. I mean, that's what self-driving cars are about, not caring for safety anymore. That the car show will do that. I won't be interested anymore in knowing there's a pedestrian, except for giving me the relief, okay, the car has recognized someone there, here and there, and will do something, so I don't need to get scared. But I think that's more about information rather than safety. Um, it will be a lot about location. It will be about where am I passing by, um, where do I want to go? Um, my most favorite thing there is always the idea of, um, I'm, I'm in the car, I want a coffee. 
I'm somewhere where I haven't been several times and I see a Starbucks sign. How do I tell my car I want to go there? I don't have an address. I don't want to Google it and Yelp it and it'll take me a minute and I'll be past it by far. But I want to point there and say, car, go there. And um, maybe I need to mention it's a coffee shop or a Starbucks or whatever. Um, but this interaction of, with content. Um, I'm not too sure if it will be too often that we pass the Eiffel Turm and want to know who built it. Um, but this kind of information could add to it too. Um, and it will, of course, be entertainment. Entertainment in the widest sense. Um, this is a video by, by Toyota. It's something like half a year old. Um, you need to see it. It was, for me, as breathtaking as our Bibles. Um, it's about a kid in a car um, having a fully um, immersive OLED transparent screen in front of it. And there, was a, there must be a camera outside filming what's happening outside. And then the kid could pick certain frames and put them smaller or get more information on something. So a, from a technology point of view, still 5 to 10, 15, 20 years from us, but from a perspective on what will be possible, extremely inspiring. Um, and then in the end, it's really about creating something in the car. And that, I think that's where the crowd knowledge that we all have needs to come in. And that's where the gaming guys need to come in, where the automotive guys will never be able to provide. They know how to build a steering wheel and they know how to build a nice surface on the steering wheel, but they don't create a room where you want to live and where you want to spend time and where you want to create something and live something. And I personally very much believe that I will never buy a Mercedes or a BMW or an Audi or a Lexus. I will in the future buy the user experience. Um, I just, uh, we, we, we exchanged an old Mini from my wife and I didn't care for the engine. I was just looking at the navigation system and the interior. Does it fit to my user experience? The engine, come on, it's boring. Combustion or electricity, I'd, no one cares for that anymore. It's about, is it you on the ride? Will you have the experience driving or getting driven that you want to achieve? And you will need some kind of interaction with that. You will need to interact with a content and it won't be a keyboard. Um, it could be in a first step a game controller, but even there I'm reluctant. I'm, I'm too old for this gaming thing. My kids beat me every time because that's the way I game and that's the way they game. Um, I need to look at the, the game controller um, and um, I think that the next generation might be more casual with it. Um, but in the car, we want to act and interact in the most natural manner. Um, you already see the first cars with kind of touchless interaction on the street today. Um, BMW has a 7 Series or 5 Series out there. Um, Volkswagen has announced the next Golf. I'm not sure if it's already on the street. Um, so it's, it's doing things you can do today with switches, swiping to change radio channel, volume up, volume down. Um, BMW showed something very nice with, an holo uh, with, a holograph, um, um, with an ultrasound feedback that gave very specific feedback, haptical feedback on your hand while you were doing something in the car. So you had a pseudo-haptic feedback while doing a non-haptical gesture and interaction. I think that's the way it will be going. It will be providing knowledge about you and it will provide feedback to you you've been doing something significant. Um, but it will go beyond that. It will be about, I'm sitting in the car, whatever direction I'm looking at, I will be want to pick content from one place to another, make it big, make it small, um, select something, deselect something. And I think it will be very much hand-based. And if I saw the, heard this, this story, um, um, we were just hearing in, in AR and VR gaming, it's very much about what do we do with our hands? How does it feel the most natural way? Um, and I think that's, that's where it's going to be going. On the other hand, you still will need the full body. Um, if you've ever seen a head-up display, for a good head-up display, you need the location of your eyes, of your body. It needs to be focused on the person, um, where you're sitting, how you're sitting, how you're behaving in the car. Um, it might also adapt to my personal style, recognizing me, 
understanding who I am, how I behave. Um, so full body tracking beyond just what my hands are doing is, is necessary. Um, but it is a greenfield approach. Today, there is not one solution out there. This whole show and the AWE last summer in, in San Francisco did not show one car interior with augmented ride. So if anyone's thinking about pivoting his startup, that's an area I would definitely start thinking about because you can use your competence from today in tomorrow's products and automotive world is huge. Thank you very much.